you know, he's you know he's watching his mother that you know that's a pothead. His father that's well, a pothead. Let me just correct you. His mother is constantly working to oh. support family, where the husband sits around and drinks. And, you know, love uh, being blind. Uh, you know. Right. So that's where the animus is coming from, Bernard. It's not coming from you and talking to him. Well, have you shared your story yeah. with him? No, but, uh, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't really had the opportunity to do so because I don't live there. and I live, uh, uh, you know, maybe... 50, 60 miles away, and I don't see them that often. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you, Bernard, I'm going to give you a suggestion, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you buy concert tickets? Buy, um, you know, take take him to Disneyland. Do something with him. Disneyland? Do, you know, somewhere. I, you Dodger know, game? Take him to a Dodger game. Take him to, there's nothing, I bet, I, and I, listen, I'm not going to say this 100%. But there's nothing that's more cool than a grandfather taking his grandson to something, and even if you get, even if it's just building up that rapport for that one moment, he'll know he's loved, mm -hmm. because I'm sure he's lacking that at the house. Well, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. Well, the love is there, but it's not there constantly because my daughter is constantly working. See, I was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 but but here's that's my best suggestion to you, Bernard. Is is get tickets to something, and say, "Hey, we're going to this. I'd like to take you to this thing," and that and and, and when you go, don't talk about the. You don't have to talk about anything. You're just there to have fun. Is that a decent yeah. advice? I think yeah, so. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I think that him. sounds great. Every yeah. once in a while, I come up with a gem, Bernard. I think it's a goodie. Yeah, it's because you're from Brooklyn, Bernard, and I'm from Brooklyn. Go spend well, go and sp go spend some time with yeah. him. Give him a call, mm. or text him. Bernard, can you call back the show next week because we're running out of time and let let yeah, us know? Right. I'll, I'll give you a call and I'll see if I can get a hold of him and if he, you know, if he's willing to take off because you know I'm an old footy. Yeah, so, it's it's but, all good, Bernard. Even if it's just calling him up and saying, "Hey, let's go get some ice cream." Yeah, I'm 73 years old, and you know, there's quite a difference in the in the uh, generation. Yeah, but you know, that. Bernard, as messed up as I was at 16 when my grandfather would say, hey, let's go do something, I would go do it because he was it. my grandfather. Yeah. Yeah, we all as were. crazy as I was. And I well, always knew I had an ally. Yeah. Well, he needs cool. an ally right yeah, now. Yeah, he needs an ally, Bernard, and I nominate you. All right, I'm there. Okay, Yay. we'll talk next week, Bernard. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Bernard. If you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. The calls are just lining up. We're in the studio tonight with Zoe Tryon anthropologist but actually just an awesome human being elisa thank you so much for we're in the studio with my guest host tonight elisa hallerman from halley life um you brought in a great woman and, she is uh, a great woman i feel really blessed to have her in my yeah. life and so i wanted to share her you, thank oh, you for sharing blessed. sharing is caring it's paying it forward yeah and you got sober when you're 22 21. 21 i'm sorry I don't mean to you make were you. I was 22, and it's all about me. <laughs> yeah. um, but let's go to the next call. Sorry, um, we got Shira from Sonoma. Shira, you're what's cooking? Welcome to Clean Radio. Welcome Hello, back. Hello, greetings. <laughs> Hi, Shira. So you guys just rocked my whole world and my week. So oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll take all the credit if that's okay. <laughs> How are you doing, man? We need so many more warriors like you. Um, what I called in was about, um, it just struck such a chord with me when mm, Judah was talking about being bored. I think it was Judah. And it just reminded me of when I was a little kid and my mom was like, okay, if you're bored, then I have something for you to do, which usually entailed something I wasn't too cool about, like cleaning baseboards or washing walls. And the point is, as I grew to become a total stoner and alcoholic, mm -hmm. um, I use that as an excuse, you know, looking in hindsight now, it was so much more in my comfort zone to realize I'm really scared, and my fear was exactly that. It was based out of, it's not in my comfort zone to try sobriety. I don't know if I can do it. I don't want all the expectations, and ultimately, I didn't want to fail. So, I saying I was bored was so much easier, and it kind of gave me an excuse just to stay within my comfort zone, you know, as disastrous as it was. Mm -hmm. I think you make a really good, a really good point, and that 
we are more comfortable staying in the uncomfortableness Mm -hmm. and that anything to change that, to get us out of that, you know, oftentimes we like, you know, we're used to feeling sad or we're used to feeling uncomfortable or we're used to having chaos, right? How much of us in sobriety just create chaos to make us feel Mm -hmm. more comfortable? Yeah. Absolutely. So what are you doing today to be on board, Shira? Oh, Gita, my day is so filled <laughs> with with exchange and networking and fabulosity. I decided to embrace my addiction or my addictive personality. Yeah. Um, I decided to learn about it, and um, everything I learn, I share. And it's come across, it's such a awakening for me and it's become actually quite a resource for everyone else that's involved and every day that I do it I just find out I am not alone and I am not bored I mean this is a full-time effort and I love it it's a labor of love and so many people need to understand it I'm just it's like a it's like a line in the sand you know just cross over and there's you know you're not alone you're not isolated you're capable all of the things all of the excuses that we had you know you realize how unfounded that they really are and it's it's every day is beautiful okay let me oh sorry go ahead alisa i was gonna say that sound that sounds beautiful and then i was just thinking you know zoe i know that the work that you do there's so much to do I always feel Mm -hmm. like every time I spend time with you I feel like I'm not doing enough there's more to do how can I help and I think that for a lot of people that are sitting home saying they feel bored Mm -hmm. what what can we do what can we do there's so much out there in this great big world so what what can people do to be helpful towards others how can they be of service in any way I mean, well, I, I just want to say that I really identify with everyone saying they were bored. And for me, it was a really, it was denial. Yeah. You know, if I was bored, I didn't have to get out and do anything. And, you know, and again, it's like those little, little, little steps. And, um, you know, I was like, just take a leap into the abyss. And I think working the 12 steps and being in recovery, I, I built up hope and then I built up faith that I knew that I would be okay doing those scary mm-hmm. things little by little by little by little. You know, terrifying, I mean, terrifying things. things. Yeah, terrifying. I mean, I've been bitten on the face by Crocs. I fight yeah. with oil companies. I, you know, big scary American oil companies that are horrible to me. You know, and and I only do that now. Things that people think are very courageous, like I've I walked up Spain by myself right. for thirty eight days. I walked through the the Amazon rainforest for days. And days. I'm not saying that to go with no bathrooms, no bathrooms <laughs> to say how tough I am, but to say this is recovery. Yeah, right. I don't have the the balls to do that. Can I say that word? I uh, will find you know? out later. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? And so yeah. and slowly as well as working the twelve steps and being in recovery. You know, we have a saying in England. I don't know if it's here. The thirteenth step is um is being with newcomers. But I think there should be a thirteenth step, which is you know, being of service out in the wider world. You know, you said yesterday you volunteered for the day and you do that every Saturday. And yet, guess what? You know, it, I feel it's actually selfish for me to go and be of service because I feel great being of service. That's right. Yeah. Me too. You know, I started picking up cigarette butts, you know, at meetings, putting away the chairs, and then it's got bigger and bigger in my life. And I love doing it so much that I do it all the time now. And what I think what's incredible is that you're sharing the story of, how those little things, you know, because people look at you. I'm sure you get this all the time, where people are like, "How could you have been an alcoholic? How could yeah. I, how could you have been an addict?" Because, I mean, it's 17 years ago. It's a different life, and and people want what you have, but they don't realize what you've done to get what you have. I'm saying, mm-hmm. I, I'm saying, I wonder if people realize that it was you. That you're an anthropologist in the Amazon mm-hmm. because you picked up ass, you picked up cigarette butts at meetings, and that's yeah. what you were willing to do mm-hmm. without even knowing one day you'd even be in, in the Amazon. Yeah. I was a scaredy cat. Yeah, on blind faith. Yeah, I was totally terrified. I, you know, I had fearlessness tattooed on my wrist to try and make me a little tougher because I was scared of everything. Yeah, that's why I was bored because I was scared to go out the house. I was one of those people who had, um, I had blinds, shutters, and curtains on my windows. Because something evil was going to come and get me. You know, I, I was slightly psychotic when I was drinking. You know, I had meat cleavers hidden yeah. around the room because someone's going to get me. I was terrified of everyone and everything. Yes. And recovery has given me this bl- absolutely awesome life. And what's amazing about that, I love that you're talking about that because these are 
a lot of alcoholics, not all, a lot of addicts have this, and a lot of regular people have this, but there's something in alcoholism and an addiction that we're ter- that there's this something that we're just terrified mm-hmm. of stuff that you shouldn't really be terrified. It just, yeah. cr- like the male. Yes. The male for an alcoholic could be the I most agree. terrifying. The, awful. the yeah. male, and in the old days, with voicemail. Oh, <laughs> I used to, when I was drinking, and I'd hear the click on the voicemail. It was terrifying. Oh, no. She were running out of time. Um, Shira, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm it, just enjoying the show. In 30 and, seconds, um, I want to know what it looked like for you the day you got sober, the day before you got sober, because you're very cheery. Before I got sober, yeah. well, yeah. I bought a really, really big um, bottle of wine, and I was determined to finish it because I'm not a quitter. Mm-hmm. And um, I just couldn't even get drunk on it anymore. And uh, I just realized, hey, this show's over. And um, I was either going to live or I was going to die. And uh, I'm a fighter and a survivor, so... You're like a you're like a, a Beyonce song. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that ama- I know anymore. You're amazing. Yeah, yeah you're, you are amazing. We'll talk about your taste in music next week. Yes. Uh, oh, I love Beyonce. But, yeah, I mean, and... Um, I just knew it was, you know, I've got to give this a shot, and um, I give it a shot every day. And, uh, hey, I can tell you I've never been bored since uh, Mm -hmm. I became sober. Okay, Shira, we got to go. I'll talk to you next week. All right, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Quickly, do we have somebody on line three? Or is it just flashing? No, we don't. Um, Okay, and we're running out of time. This has been an amazing show tonight. I want to thank Elisa Hallerman, who's in the studio with us tonight. i got to say, like, Last week you were in, I had amazing respect for you and because I think what you're doing is amazing. Thank you. And But there's something in the way you talk about it. It's it's um, it, it, I get why you were a great agent, but it's so cool that you took what you were good at and really you're saving lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I thought it was important to, I mean, I did go back to school to become yeah. a drug and alcohol counselor. And I think that was... That was really important for me to have an education so I wasn't just out there talking. Right. And now going back to school and getting my doctorate as well, it's important for me to understand what it is that I'm talking about. But um, Yes, it is. But you've done the work. Yeah. You know, you've done the work. Yeah. You've done your own recovery, and that's yeah. what. And you have a gift as well. You do. An I'm amazing very lucky gift. to have you as my and bestie. I, and I'm not just saying that. You're HallieLife.com. That's without an E. That's H-A-L-L-Y life.com. I promise you this will change your life if you go to this. I want to thank you, Zoe Tryon. Are you in town for long? Are you? I'm not hitting on you. I'm just uh, curious how long you're uh, staying in the country for. I think I'm going to be here for a few weeks. Right on. Uh, At my I, house for a few weeks? Yes, I'm, I'm moving I'm going to try my hardest. Actually, I'm moving in with you, darling. I, I would I'm, love this, it. This is like when you have a good first date and right away you say, I want you back. <laughs> I want to go on another date. I would love to have you on within the next couple weeks because I... I I feel like, and I said this to you last week, there's so much more I want to know, but because the show is growing, we're getting so many calls, it's so hard to find out about our amazing, talented guests. How do people look at your, you know, find out about the anthropology? I saw amazing pictures with you and what look like poor children. And I, li- I like having yes. face, face paint. Did you yes. didn't have your face paint, I have my no, face paint all amazing the time. face paint. Where do people go quickly? Um, you can go on to Facebook, yes. Zoe Tryon, T-R-Y-O-N, or I'm building a website at the moment, and it's a bad one up at the moment, zoetryon.com. Um, ZoeTryon.com. Just go. It, you, I'm, I'm in the studio tonight. I got to say this with women, not girls, but women. And I want to yeah. thank you so much. And anybody out there that needs help and is in a dark place right now, don't give up. None of us did. The discussion continues at CleanRadio.com. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040. Or go to Clean Treatment Center, that's clean with a K, cleantreatmentcenter.com.